Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red deck titled Rusty Red, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a small artifact theme with Patchwork Automaton, a 2 mana 1 1 with Ward 2, saying whenever we cast an artifact spell, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. We've got Ogre Head Helm, a 2 mana 2 2 artifact creature that's also an equipment that we can reconfigure for 3 mana, giving the equipped creature plus 2 plus 2, and then when the helm or the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, we may sacrifice it meaning the helm or the equipped creature respectively, and if we do, discard our hand to draw three, so it can be a nice way to refuel if we're empty-handed. And then the final artifact creature in the deck is Reinforced Ronin, one mana for a 2-2 creature with haste, and at the beginning of our end step we have to pick up the Ronin back to our hand, so it can help dodge sorcery speed removal and sweeper effects, and is also a great way to enable our patchwork automaton turn after turn, so it can pick up more plus one counters, can also channel the Ronin for two mana by discarding it to draw a card, so we can get rid of it if it's no longer useful, can also maybe equip it with an ogre head helm, so we can sacrifice it to draw three. Then we have two copies of Play With Fire as a cheap burn spell dealing two damage to any target, and if we target an opponent we can also scry one. We've got a full playset of Kumano faces Kakazan, the powerful new one mana saga dealing one damage to each opponent and each planeswalker they control. On chapter two, the next creature spell we cast enters with a plus one plus one counter, which is a great way of modifying our creatures as we'll see in a second, and eventually transforms into a 2-2 creature with haste that can also help exile opposing creatures. We've got a Bloodthirsty Adversary, a 2-2 with haste, that can be played for 5 mana later in the game, so it enters with a plus one plus one counter, and in that case we can also replay an instant or sorcery from our graveyard without paying its mana cost, as long as it has mana value 3 or less, and we've got 8 burn spells total we can replay with the Adversary, already covered play with fire, then we've got the full playset of Kami's Flare at 2 mana, dealing 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker, as well as 2 damage to that permanence controller if we control a modified creature, and modifications include equipment, auras, and counters, so all the plus one counters in our deck are great ways to modify our creatures and let the Kami's Flare deal more damage. And then the final instant in our deck that we can replay with Adversary is Seismic Wave at 3 mana, dealing 2 damage to any targets and 1 damage to each non-artifact creature target opponent controls, so you can potentially deal 3 damage to an opposing non-artifact creature. Great way to deal with multiple one toughness creatures against, for example, the Mono White deck, which has quite a few of those, and can also go upstairs to potentially burn the opponent out. And then we've got the full playset of a Reckless Stormseeker, powerful 3 mana 2-3 two, that can give a creature plus 1 plus 2 and haste at the beginning of combat, including itself, and if it transforms to Knight, becomes even more powerful. And our curve topper is Thundering Raiju, a 3-3 three, three with haste, and when the Raiju attacks, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, including the Raiju itself, and then the Raiju deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of modified creatures we control, other than Thundering Raiju, so can deal some additional incidental damage. And then our mana base includes a few creature lands with a full playset of Den of the Bugbear, as well as three copies of Crawling Barons. One of the advantages of being a monocolor deck is that we get to play these colorless creature lands, and Crawling Barons also has a little bit of synergy with modifications, as it will put plus one plus one counters on itself. And then one copy of Crucible of Defiance, making a pair of 1-1 one -one hasty spirit tokens, and then 16 basic mountains. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, and we've got a keepable hand here. Turn one Ronin, turn two, most likely Adversary. And then a Kami's Flare for interaction. If we draw a couple more lands, we can reconfigure our Ogre Head Helm. So up against Mono White. A matchup where we would like to draw quite a few removal spells. Thalia gonna make Flare more expensive. Although we could go for a Stormseeker instead. That seems fine. Although they will be able to train the Initiate if I don't kill Thalia. Could just keep Stormseeker on defense. And then hope they don't have a removal spell for it. Close call. The upside of playing Stormseeker is that we can initiate the day and night cycle, and then Kami's Flare at instant speed could come in handy. So I think I'm okay attacking with the Stormseeker if they want to train initiate. 
they're maybe vulnerable on the way back. So your opponent attacks. And Anthra's ready to play. Okay, so I can Kami's Flare Adversary now. And attack. Alternatively, can go Ogre Head Helm plus Ronin. Attack with everyone after pumping the Helm. And keep Stormseeker back. Or the Stormseeker could also get in there. I think I hang on to Kami's Flare. What happens if they just take it and attack back? They get to train the initiate again. They would gain 3 life. I think that's still okay. So we'll give this haste. And then do I attack with everyone? Or do I leave Stormseeker back, which could also block Thalia? And then they're kind of incentivized to trade off for Helm. I think that's fine. Four mana for a Luminarch. Counter on Thalia, so they get to attack past Stormseeker. But our opponent stays back, and Seismic Wave would have been a great draw if we could actually cast it. Now I think the plan is to pass, let it go to Knight, and then Kami's Flare, whatever they put a counter onto with Aspirant, hopefully not itself. And then... Seismic Wave could clean up Aspirant if it's still a 1-1. One -one. Raidan does not make Kami's Flare more expensive. Opponent pumps Thalia. And then feel free to attack. Opponent does not. So Kami's Flare, Thalia. Get to untap. Now if I go Ronin plus Seismic Wave, it will switch back to Daytime. But that might still be acceptable, and then I think the plan is to um, kill Raidan before they get a chance to block. Although, I suppose only one of Ronin or Adversary could attack with the boost from Slasher to get past Initiate, unless we want to wait on Seismic Wave to maybe trade, which is also reasonable. Alright, let's try that. So we can pump Adversary, so they're more likely to trade for Ronin instead of Adversary. See how they block, and then Seismic Wave should be quite effective. So let's see, I can just damage my opponent directly, or we can save Adversary by killing Initiates, which seems better. And then... We still get to trample for four, so we didn't miss out on any damage. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so not the easiest game, had a lot of decisions, but things worked out. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty interesting hand. We're lacking a two drop to take full advantage of Kumano here. But a powerful late game with double Raiju. So it might be worth a keep still. Could also wait on Kumano, play turn 1 Ronin to give ourselves more time to draw a creature to benefit from chapter 2. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. And then next turn we get to double spell at the very least. Turn 1 Eye Twitch, can jump, another Raiju. Opponent does jump. And then hopefully we'll pick up a creature we can play alongside Ronin. Could also maybe attack and then channel to cycle to hit our fourth land drop. 
to make sure we can chain together all these four drops. Opponent on black white. All right, we've got land four. So this will enter with a counter. And once Kumana transforms, exiling the opponent's creatures also prevents them from learning. So that's a relevant interaction. Now to channel or not to channel is an interesting question. Might be okay to do so. All right, play Raichu. And we can put a counter on the etching. And because of etching, Pest gets exiled, opponent doesn't gain one life. If we want to play around a sweeper, we can activate Crawling Barons instead of playing another Raiju. Opponent is playing Snow Lands, so Blood on the Snow could be on the menu. As well as maybe a Meat Hook Massacre for three. Yeah, I think playing another Ranger is probably okay. Don't have something to replay with Adversary, which would be another option. So, double Raichu, they can pump each other. And then a Meat Hook for three wouldn't be all that bad. And hopefully we can kill the opponent before a Blood on the Snow takes place. Opponent chumps. Could see a planeswalker like Spider Queen to buy time. Right, Meat Hook Massacre for three instead. Just killing the etching. And now just activating Crawling Burns would be enough, but a third Raichu can also work here. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Lead things off with Kumano, and then turn to Adversary. Looks good, make a 3-3. Don't have any interactive spells in hand, which could come back to bite us if we face a more creature-heavy deck. But for now, getting in the red zone, Hopefully no turn to 3-3, three, three. it's going to be a Magda. Can still attack into that at least. And we're not going to hold back another Adversary and Ronin. All haste all the time. So yeah, being on the play, lots of haste creatures, opponent doesn't have a large blocker. Things are going according to plan. We'll see if they... Feel the need to trade. They're gonna take it. Fall to seven. And now if we draw a few burn spells, those could just end the game for us. Magda attacks to make a treasure. Could see Hesika's chariot for four mana to try and stabilize. Yep. So that's a good one. Now we can still play double Ronin plus Helm. And then see what happens, because if they crew chariot to block my 3-3, they'll take a ton of damage. And uh, if they trade for the 2-2s, two we still get in with our 3-3 three three and a couple more creatures, so... Alright, well that was pretty much the perfect draw. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a very nice hand. Kumano into Adversary. And then hopefully pick up some artifacts to go with Automaton. If we're expecting early removal, could also be correct to go with Automaton first. Initiates. Ooh, nice Seismic Wave is going to be great against Mono White. Yeah, I think Adversary is still the play here. Here. 
And then maybe we'll keep the second adversary to replay Seismic Wave. Aspirants, certainly worth killing. So, don't think we're playing another adversary. So I'll start by attacking, save their double block. They don't. So now I have to decide if I want to play Automaton or set up Seismic Wave, which would probably be killing Aspirants. But there's no extra one toughness creature for me to take out with it. Next turn they could make a 3-3 Aspirant attack and train, but then their creatures are tapped, which is fine by me. If we see a Spellbinder, they could make my Seismic Wave more expensive, but if I keep up mana I can at least kill their response. So I think we pass, and then reevaluate beginning of combat before Aspirin triggers. Our opponent is green-white, so can see cards like Sigarda, maybe the partners if they're splashing red as well. Another initiate. And another one. Okay, well in that case... What's my plan? Probably just kill Aspirants. Let them keep all those initiates. As opposed to trying to uh, blow up a double block. And then I'll attack with everyone. They can triple block adversary, but that could be bad for them if we have another burn spell. So our opponent's going to take it, play Automaton. And we've got them down to six. There's red mana for partners potentially, and an adversary. Gonna pump their team. Well, we desperately need another removal spell here. Don't have any good attacks anymore. So we'll just play Helm. And then untap land of the top lets me play a kicked adversary to replay Seismic Wave, which would be quite effective. Hope they can pump the Intrepid adversary in the meantime. Spellbinder. Gonna make adversary more expensive, I'm sure. So we're drawing towards a handful of burn spells. Can also reconfigure Ogre Head Helm to potentially draw. Let's say I put it on Adversary, make it a 5-5 attack. Still only trades for one initiate, so that's not that great. So I think we just play Helm, equip Helm. And which creature should we be equipping? Maybe the uh, etching? Sure. But no attack. Thalia makes her non creatures more expensive, and Minsk joins the fun. So it's going to take a lot of mana now to adversary replay Seismic Wave. Opponent's going to attack to train those initiates. Can kill one of them for free. And then a double block might be warranted. And then uh, going to keep the automaton around. Another adversary, but now because of Thalia... We wouldn't be able to play our uh, burn spell. So do I have any good attacks? Doesn't look like it. I can keep up my creature land. I can play 4 mana adversary just as a 2-2. Or I can reconfigure Ogre Head Helm. I think just playing adversary is probably okay.
They also have a Cave of the Frost Dragon that can be enabled. So they've got a two-turn clock in the air. Opponent doing some math. Right, Minsk gonna pump the hamster. Those to attack. And uh if I take 11, down to 2, next turn, draw the untapped land for adversary, play it, kill the intrepid adversary on the other side, attack with the team. How does that pan out? Because I would also kill Spellbinder and Thalia, leaving them with just Minsk. And we should be able to kill them on the way back. So trading doesn't seem necessary in that scenario. Now let's say... I don't draw the land, then my play next turn's not looking all that great. Probably don't have any good attacks. So I think we're pretty much all in on drawing the untapped land here. So I'll take it. Alright, there we go. Seismic Wave, target adversary, and the opponents, and kill all those one toughness creatures. And smash. Oof, what a top deck. Yeah, that game could have turned out a lot different without a land, but luckily for us we found it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Kumano into Automaton. More artifact creatures are welcome, lands are fine. Opponents could be on a control deck. Black White. Play Automaton, which is resistant against most removal spells they could have here. So they're gonna Vanishing versus Saga, but we got our value, so that worked out. And now a Restoration. So Stormseeker looks good. And next turn maybe play Helm, or we can try and play around a Meat Hook Massacre a little bit better. So Restoration did not put anything in play, meaning they probably don't have any more lands. Wandering Emperor can exile Stormseeker. And they did it main phase to keep it daytime. Adversary the draw. So what's my play? Can just play Helm, Grow Automaton, or can play Adversary. If they have a Meat Hook Massacre... They can wipe my board anyway, unless, like we suspect, they don't have a land and they can only massacre for two, in which case Helm growing automatons a better play. Sure. And then we can maybe wait on Adversary to replay Seismic Wave. It's gonna be a wedding announcement. Okay, so I can play Raiju Pump itself, put on double blocks. And uh, we trade for Architect. It's probably fine. If I attack with everyone, then they can eat Automaton, take a little bit more damage. Nah, we'll. Uh, Try and preserve our board. And this sets up our seismic wave nicely. Another announcement. So lots of tokens to kill here. 
So I will do the wave before uh, this transforms and pumps their team and this lets us attack as well. Don't think we're sacrificing Helm. And then play with Fire can maybe deal with one, two, two, end of turn. Opponent passes, so they've got Hive of the Eye Tyrant available, plus maybe another Wandering Emperor. So, could also just point to play with fire upstairs in the hopes of burning them out. Is that a better approach? Can keep it in hand in case I draw land so I can play it alongside Raichu, blow up a double block. So it's a close call. Yeah, I guess we'll just take our draw step. And then now we want to play Raichu, pumping Helm, burn them for two. So our opponent does have a Hive of the Eye Tyrant that can block, would be a 4-4 now thanks to the enchantment, so they can line up a few favorable blocks. But uh, we might be able to just burn them out. If I play Raiju, put the counter on Helm, I would deal 2 damage to them directly. And then we probably get in with at least one creature, and then we still have a play with fire, and an adversary to replay a burn spell to close out the game. That seems reasonable. Yeah, let's go for it. Opponent does animate Hive. Lines up the expected blocks. But still takes three damage. So yeah, now we're on the burn plan. Play with fire plus adversary. Could adversary first. And then hopefully there's no wandering emperor to gain a few more life points. So Try and make sure there's no tapped creatures in play. So we'll pass. Opponent does nothing. Thirst on Helm. That works. Tokens attack. We'll take it. Can level up Crawling Barons as well. And Adversary should do it, unless they remove it at instant speed. Which they do not. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and hand looks acceptable. Up against blue whites, so control deck. Let's see here. Could lead with automaton, or I can just get some hasty damage in with adversary before it gets countered. Yeah, let's try that. Upside of Automaton is that it's more resistant against spot removal. But against blue-white, an early Doomscar is one of our main concerns. Now, don't have an ideal play lined up for this turn. Can attack for two, maybe play Automaton, and then if they play Doomscar, so be it. If not, we at least added something to the board. I think that's a fair compromise. Kami's Flare, not ideal in the matchup, although can still deal with a Planeswalker, like the Wandering Emperor. Especially if we can get two extra damage out of it, it's still okay. Although controlling a modified creature can be a challenge against control. So there's a Doomscar, but we can follow up with a couple more creatures and 
Now I'm liking Automaton into Ogre Head Helm. And then we have the flexibility of reconfiguring the helm, which plays around another sweeper. Or we can try and empty our hands to uh, sacrifice the helm to draw. So how about I play another automaton, attack with a team, opponent could flash in Wandering Emperor killing helm. But then we can Kami's Flare to finish it off, deal two more damage. And then Adversary can maybe replay Kami's Flare at some point. Alternative is just playing both creatures out. Which is also reasonable. Let's see if there's a response here. There isn't. Yeah, what's the downside of playing Adversary? It's bad if they have another Doomscar at 5. Although they didn't foretell, but they didn't necessarily have to. If I play Adversary and they don't have Wandering Emperor, then I'm probably okay sacrificing Helm, get rid of Kami's Flare, draw 3. So you know what, so let's just play Adversary. And then if they do have a Wandering Emperor, Exile Helm, sure they get to maybe plus the Wandering Emperor next turn or make an extra Samurai but we can kill that with the Kami's Flare. So it doesn't really bother me. And luckily they cannot exile the Automaton, which has Ward. Ah, opponent takes it, we'll activate Helm. And then hopefully there's no Doomscar, but at least now we've got a fresh set of cards to work with. And the Den of the Bugbear as a nice creature lands. Right, it's gonna be Deluge end of turn. Was the only likely outcome. And then I'm fully expecting a board wipe at five. Given that they uh, get to dig with Deluge. So if they do Doomscar, I wouldn't mind drawing a land so I can play Ronin and activate then. All right, no Doomscar. So now they might have multiple spot removal spells, or maybe Wandering Emperor plus a March. So I expect two creatures to be answered. But um, can maybe lead with Raichu, see if that gets countered. Play around Jory Disruption. And then Ronin pumps both automatons. All right, side coming. Play Ronin. And since Automaton is on cast, even if Ronin gets countered, we still get those plus one counters. So that's a lot of damage coming in. This would be lethal. So either Fateful Absence or March could deal with one of my creatures. It's going to be March for one, exiling Ronin, which can be quite annoying for a control deck. Opponent falls to one. It's going to be Devastating Mastery, cast at four mana. So another mode you see very often, so let me read this once again. So we pick up two non-land permanents, back to our hands, and then the rest will get destroyed. So yeah, we'll pick up our Saga and our Hasty Adversary, and then the Saga by itself can close out the game. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So yeah, we get to rank up here. Got a very nice win streak going with Monored. Lots of fast games, although to be fair, we did get pretty lucky being on the play in most games. And uh, overall, got pretty lucky with uh, draws as well along the way. One card particularly that impressed me was Seismic Wave, especially against those mono-white decks. Being able to clear a whole bunch of one toughness creatures can be incredibly valuable. So I could see increasing that number. Uh, I did have a split with Play With Fire just to have a slightly cheaper burn spell, which can also be necessary against the white aggro decks, especially if Thalia is involved. Sometimes Seismic Wave can be a little bit too slow and clunky, but uh, certainly a worthy card in this deck. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, 
And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.